Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Endless Space 2 with Zebu Nation. I'm gonna try to get back in the swing of things with uh, the Riftborn. I, I wasn't really feeling the new vaulters. I don't know, I just, uh, they seemed a little gimmicky and yet generic at the same time. I don't exactly know how to explain it. They seemed, you know, sort of gimmicky with the whole colonizing stuff. And then just sort of generic in terms of they're just another sort of human race and they didn't seem all that special. Obviously, I didn't get into them very much, but I just wasn't feeling them. And then, of course, the whole football manager thing got in the way. So I'm going to go back to what feels a little bit uh, more comfortable, more exciting. And we're going to go back to our Riftborn playthrough. We're in turn 80 of this playthrough, so it's a little bit more advanced. And uh, just try to remember where we're at. So we got some uh, some people who are around us and who are not too friendly. We got uh, Doria over here making moves on our system. She's got a little fleet over here. I don't think she's dangerous quite yet, but she could be in the future. So we got to watch that. We're building up fleets just in case to... You know, make sure we don't get invaded. We've also got these pirates over here I want to take care of. Got another system over here I want to colonize or at least explore. So we got some explorer ships going that way. That's kind of uh, what's happening. We can run down our little checklist here. Take a look at our colonies one by one. Right now we got uh, Viacarus. Seems to be our most healthiest colony. It's got the most production, it's got the most dust, and the fourth most science, but we got a lot of science on our little uh, systems here. They don't have a governor, so it'd be nice to get them a governor, but they do have also not enough influence. That's an issue. It'd be nice for our best colony to also have some influence. And influence as a whole in our systems are not very good, so we got to work on that. And we got Vanguard. Which is pretty good. They do have an overseer here, Mr. E. They got food, which we don't need a lot of food, but we do have some minor races, so having some food for them is helpful. They got the most, eh, the second most production, the second most dust, third most science, the most influence, which is interesting. Plus 19 from the planet, plus 5 from Denark University. They got a galactic headquarters and a colony. So they got a lot of little bonuses there that add up. They've also got a lot of resources. Our only source of Tritanium, a source of Hyperium, and a source of Blue Cap Mold. We got a lot of Blue Cap Mold and that helps us out in the science department for sure. Trappist 1, which was our minor races that we absorbed. They've got food, of course. Third most production, that's good. They're a little low on dust. Only 16 dust. The highest science, though, in our empire comes from those guys, so that's good. Not a lot of influence. Gaikon. Uh, it's a newer colony. It's struggling right now. We need to work on them. They don't have a lot of production. They're a negative zone in dust. Got decent science. Some blue cap mold helps them out in that area. But they got a long way to go. We're still building the drone networks there, so that's pretty much the first step that we usually take with our colonies. Uh, Guyana also is another young, struggling colony. They got 65 production, not great. Negative 11 dust, also not good. And they're still on their way, still building the interplanetary transport network. Edisir is a pretty good colony. Third most, well, yeah, fourth most production, but still pretty decent production. Third most amount of dust, good science, good influence. They've got Hyperium and Blue Cap Mold, so they can help us out with those resources. And then finally, we've got Columba, one of our newest colonies. Only one population. They do have a governor, though. Schwa is the governor. Nice production. Not very good dust. Not very good science at all. They do have some Blue Cap Mold that they'll be able to exploit sooner or later. So, uh, you know, our colonies are looking okay. we got a few that are lagging behind. we got to work on them. But I think in the in the most part, we gotta just look for expansion and uh, some improvements from our military and other places. So that's okay. Politics-wise, 
Uh, we got three laws enacted. The Jinguist Joy Bill. Plus 30 happiness per war because the militarists are in power right now. Um, lower fleet costs as well, so we can start building some ships. And then Beachhead Bylaw. Plus 15 production on outposts. So we can start uh, throwing up a bunch of outposts and uh, see what that does for us. The problem is right now we're laws, it's going to take 66 influence per turn to upkeep these laws. We are, we're only making 31 per turn, so we're going to run out of influence in a few turns here. So we're only going to be able to take advantage of these laws for as long as we can. And then we got to, you know, cut back on what laws we got going on. Monetary resource wise, we do have access to the entirety of of the uh, marketplace now so that's good we can start buying and selling luxuries and ships and resources should we need them we got a couple of heroes available crack cubed he's a hero a guardian or Oleg Lagarin he's also a guardian but he's a scientist industrialist so we might pick up one of these guys once we get enough dust to do so. I always like buying more heroes because you saw we could use some uh, we could use some governors and maybe at some point we could also use some war leaders. So we'll have to take a look at these guys. Ships, we don't necessarily need any ships right now, but it's good to know that there are some available should we need them. Like this chamber looks pretty good. 995 attack. It's pretty good. 2.8 thousand. Hmm. Um, that's pretty expensive, but, to, you know, eventually we might be able to afford it. Anyway, that's what's going on there. In terms of our overview of our empire, we're making 100 dust per turn. We're very low on manpower. we got to work on our manpower. Okay on influence. It'd be nice to get that. A little bit better. We're good on resources for the most part. Stra uh, strategic and otherwise, we're pretty decent. So not a lot to worry about there. Scientifically, we got a lot of things in the queue right now. Two turns for hyper pack, so we can do a little better in diplomacy. Uh, vacuum protection, so we can get some more modules. Compact warp methods. Get some better... Uh, colonization and stuff like that so we got a lot of stuff going on graviton research for more science more colonization and some antimatter so that would be nice to get some more antimatter into the fold got a lot going on there with science ship wise we still have pretty much the same ships as before uh, we've got our small attack ships but we do have the um, Admantium and Hyperium bonuses now, so we can build better attack ships. And I just built this new ship, I called it the Prime, and it's basically a invasion ship. I, I put a bunch of, uh, let's edit it here. I put a bunch of these kind of uh, support modules that hold crew members, and so we can hold a pretty sizable invasion force on this ship, and, uh, you know, for my for a small ship anyway, we can use it uh, for now as our invasion ship. Should we need it? The problem with it is that it takes a lot of manpower to make one of these, so we're gonna need to build up our manpower before we start throwing these into action, or we'll just run out of people. Uh, let's see the academy. These are our three guys we got here. We got E, we got Sigma, and we got Schwa. Sigma is out in one of our fleets. Right now, you saw that Schwa and E are out there, uh, you know, holding things down in various systems. Events. We got a couple of events going on. Chapter 1, The Beachhead, Part 2. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So, yeah, this is the one where we've got uh, that weird virus man hanging out. And we're trying to build him a system that he can use as like a research base. So I thought I had done that already. But apparently, I think the system started out with its science too high. Because it says, 
colonize a new system and raise its science to 60. Well, we did that. But, uh, maybe it happened too quickly. I don't know. I don't know what happened, but we'll try it again. We'll try to raise another colony to 60 and see what happens. Uh, we got the Riftborn Part 1. We need to possess five cold planets. We got four, so we need one more. Dust to dust. Raise the amount of dust produced per turn in the galaxy to 6307. We're pretty close. We got 5703. Don't know where we're at in that. Probably not first place. Then we got the Living Plague Part 1. Orbit around Guyana until the enemy fleet appears. We got 10 turns until that happens. So that's another reason we got to build up our fleets. Reward will be hyper packs. We're already researching hyper packs. Maybe we should stop researching hyper packs. Oh uh, well. Maybe that'll just move on to our next research, whatever our next research is, hopefully. Because it would, it would suck to get a reward that we've already got. So anyway. That's it for our quests. And then diplomacy, we've, you know, figured out a bunch of people. There's still a couple of question marks here. One, two, three, four question marks. Right now we're in a cold war with the Horatio. Also cold war with Loam. The AI. Huh. We're, uh, we're moving towards a positive trend with them, so that's good, though. Another Horatio. Horatio the Great versus I am Horatio. Cold War, also negative with these guys. Um, yeah, Saint Chavert. We got hostility towards these guys. Basically, they've been, uh, you know, invading our systems a little bit, sucking out our population, and we gotta, we gotta get them to stop doing that. The Leaper, of course, he's always, you know volatile but we do have do have some good relationship trends with him I guess that's good we've got Shargon passive aggressive defensive Cold War with him positive trend and then Doria negative trend with her unfortunately so we gotta uh, we gotta worry about Doria she's in our systems all right so let's end this turn and get going yeah, we do have some idle singularities. That's okay. We're not using them at the moment. Building up some singularities just to try to use them and see what's up. Oh, we got an election. All right, this is good. Nice to start out a video with an election year. So I would kind of like the industrialists back in charge. So we're going to send our official support to the industrialists. See what we got. Voting breakdowns. Industrialists and militarists neck and neck. Looks like the industrialists are going to take over. Looks like they won the vote. By uh, a smidge. Let's see what they're at. Yep, the industrialists have defeated the militarists. The militarists are the minority party. So there we go. E is our new, uh, our new leader, our new governor. So there we go. Good job, industrialists. Now we got to worry about enacting new laws and stuff, and we'll see. Force laws enacted. Dust windfall. 15% of industry spent for any construction is converted into dust at the end. So that's going to help our dust start increasing. As you can see, we just jumped up to plus 129. That's cool. Cooperative crest completed. D dust to dust. There we go. We finished not in the top three, so we did not get any bonuses for that. Doria, of course, usually finishes up top, and she did again in this sort of situation, just because she's all about the money. Horatio the Great, interesting, at second place, and then Shargon. Huh, alright. Alright, oh boy, there's a diplomatic message requires. from uh, Saint Chauvert. The faithful feel uneasy with your growth and power. The church aims to close its borders to ease their worries. All right, that's fine. You're one of our favorite fish in this galactic sea. 
Doria's a little bit more open to things, so that's good. Let us hope our relations go well and profitably. Okay. The wrath of the church is feared by all. I wonder why you insist on calling it down upon yourself. Because you keep messing with my peeps, my pops. Um, so they've closed our borders to us. That's fine. Get out of here. So, uh, not a lot of production going on right now. Edisir has built a colonial exchange, so that's going to help our dust production even more. Cerebral Reality built on Columbia. And then we're building some more population. So we're just trying to boost our population up. Because our, you know, our population is so good. When we build one of these, uh one of these new uh, bodies form and they come over from the other dimension they just help everything all of our production goes up money everything goes up when we build one of these guys so we should start maxing out our population a little bit political ideology the jingoist joy bill was uh, eliminated and that's fine we didn't really want that anyway so get out of here alright let's move our fleets around oh boy we had somebody messing around with Zaycor. That's no good. Who's this? Doria. Got a caravel. Not much of an attacking ship, an, ex an exploration ship, but I don't think we need to get uh, too hostile with her at the moment. So that's fine. Nothing else going on this turn. Got our ship sitting here in defense. Um, yeah, I think that's okay. Alright, let's just end the turn and get going. I was thinking about sending this fleet towards the pirates, but I don't know. Alright, so we got our hyper packs complete. We can now have some more diplomacy. We can join alliances and stuff. That's good. Uh, we got a new election action in the Senate. Improves actions to influence the election results. We can now colonize ocean planets, so that's good. Up next is vacuum protection. Competitive quest started. Founders keepers. The system Zaycor has recently become a flashpoint in the galaxy-wide struggle for dominance. Due to its unique history, position, and resource distribution, it's caught the eye of multiple empires, some of who are reportedly eyeing it as a potential new base. Now is your chance to beat them to it and deny them this valuable strategic foothold. Be the first to control the target system. Found a colony on Zaycor before anyone else. 500 dust and 250 influence is your reward. All right. Whatever you're planning... You don't want to hurt us harmless sophons, do you? Harmless sophons. You might have seen our war with those other clods isn't going too well. Bad space, w space weather. Anyhow, would, how would you feel about an alliance? Oh boy. We got lots of people already here. Alright, so we're going to have to... Flex our muscle over here on Zaycor. Send a fleet over there. Got a colony ship that we're building in a few turns, so it's going to take us a while to do anything, but we got to uh, do what we can. All right, Columba has built their machine embodiment, so they've increased their population. Now we got level 2 modernization coming up. Empire development. Improved commercial drives. As your empire develops, military research trickles down to the public and makes emigration ships faster. Plus one movement points to civilian ships. Alright, that's good. Be the first to pass a law from each of the six political parties. Ha. Huh. Okay. That's going to be a while. I don't think we even have six political parties at the moment. Anyways, move our ships around. Holy smokes. 
pirates. There's a massive fleet of pirates heading here to crash the party. The ninth atrocious pirates, the second brutal pirates, and the eighth brutal pirates. So we're going to get our scout ship out of here. And there's another pirate place. So we's in trouble. Alright. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Um, that's fine. Fine, 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 fine. Yes. It's fine. It's fine. Um. Yeah. There's a lot going on in this system. I don't want to disrupt their production. There's not a lot of places that I do want to disrupt their production. Uh, how is this place looking? Columba. Uh, they got some interesting stuff going on. But not a lot of production. Well, they got the Obelisk of Remembrance. I don't want to mess that up. Okay, Trappist maybe. We could build some more fleets there. And Viacarus. Alright, so we'll... Uh, build some ships here. We'll build... Man. Shade is an attack ship. Firewall and bench. Oh uh, boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We don't really have a ton of great ships to be building. But we will nonetheless. They don't have a ton of manpower. Is there any place that's got some manpower to share? Viacarus, maybe. Ah, Trappist. Yes. So we'll be able to prime there. See what we can do there. Alright, alright. No, don't quit. Let's end the turn. So we got uh, we got some interesting problems here. I think we're behind the curve a little militarily. That's not gonna be good. Oh boy. Uh, what happened? Oh, uh, we got a battle. Alright. So first of all, we got production. Machine embodiment on Edisee. We're building some Geist. Patriot pill. Spin project. Level 2 modernization. Okay, get out of here. New event in progress. The new industrialist movement on Trappist 1 is causing more problems than you would like. Apparently some political organizations have been spearheading a civilian movement to tear down the old. Destroying valuable cultural monuments and priceless artifacts in an attempt to usher in a new industrial era. If this is allowed to continue, intellectualism and innovation on Trappist-1 will be crippled for decades to come. Still, the near financial energy of this movement is doing wonders for the system's industry. What will you do? Oh, golly. We need to build them ships, you know what I'm saying? We need to build those ships. Minus... Yeah, we're going to ignore it. I'm sorry. I don't like this as a philosophy, but, you know, um, got to be a little practical here. We're, we're getting, getting invaded. We've got enemies on all sides. Solo quest complete the Living Plague Part 2. I thought they weren't supposed to be here for 10 turns, but apparently they are here. Um, so the your fleet is ready, maintaining radio silence, waiting for its prey. Orbit around Guyana until the enemy fleet appears. Reward hyper packs. Great. New objectives. Oh. Defend the system. We'll get pirate shield. Defense module. Nice. 540 shield capacity. 104 energy defense. Plus 30 health bonus. That's pretty good. Win the battle. That's easier said than done, apparently. Solo quest complete. Okay. 
Anox Jink has proved itself a valuable ally with the Riftborn. It is not without its eccentricities, but there can be no doubt as to its capabilities. It will help our cause immensely over the difficult times ahead. I hope it is not too late. The communion must never know of its origin, of course. They wouldn't understand. All right, so we did colonize that system, and it did raise its science to 60, because it's, like, well over that. So maybe the, the system just wasn't fully colonized until now. I don't know. Anyway, we got a new religious seeker. He's a guy we can put in a fleet, I think. I don't know. We can take a look at him in a minute. Get done. Okay, solo quest. Jeez, we got a lot of quests happening. This is an exciting turn here. The horrors of this world grow daily. Oh, this is chapter 2. Anyway, rebuke from on high. The horrors of this world grow daily. It's starry nights and fecund world. Fecund? Hmm, not too familiar with that word. Anyway, it's so-called intelligent life born of evolutionary laws that pit every organism as winner or loser. Everything horrifies. Everything scars. The worst, though, living in this artificial shell is that slowly but inexorably I grow immune to its bleakness, or perhaps not immune, but numb. I wonder, should Koras ever be cleansed of the blight, would I be able to return, or am I forever changed? Am I destined to live out my years here in this universe? Possibly, my friend. Anyway, a moot, a moot question, perhaps. News from Koraz suggests no breakthrough in slowing or even understanding the blight. Perhaps if the communion invested more of their energies on investigating the rift and less on spying on me, they might have made more progress. Yes, they learned of the existence of the virus Annex Jink, and their reprimand was severe. Keep anything else from us, they said, and you will be stripped of the title of Grand Viceroy in order to return to Koraz immediately. They didn't need to say what fate awaits me there. I will not be so careless in the future. All right. The communion wish our efforts to be focused on the rift. The presence of the virus affords us an opportunity to study it in detail. So that is certainly possible. We already know that some type of rupture in this universe precipitated the emergence of the rift, but we don't know the details. NX Jink will help rectify that. Or I can focus my efforts on cementing my own authority, being ready for unforeseen events, the construction of a supremely powerful vessel would be a rational choice to fight off our enemies without or within. So consolidate. Assign Annex Jink to a fleet of 400 manpower or more. We'll get the uh, Scrap Kings. Minus 30 ship costs on system. Though that's a new law we could enact. Or investigate. Assign Annex Jink to a system with a trade company. And we'll get the We Are Equals. Minus 30% reduction cost. I think I would rather assign him to a fleet. I don't really know much about... Oh my god, look at this guy. He is horrifying. Wow, look at him. Why? I wish he would stop wiggling. <laughs> I really, I really wish he would stop wiggling like that. That is grotesque. Oh my god. Ah, stop it. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. Uh, okay, what are his skills here? He's got uh, the scavenger, minor civilization, uh, plus five influence on system, and plus one per hero level. That's pretty good. Hmm. Plus 15 science on system, and plus 1.5 movement and vision range. Planets. I think actually he does, he would help us out as a system governor. We need more influence. We could use more science, of course. Yeah, let's just boost him up. There we go. So he's giving us plus 30 science and plus 10, plus 18 um, influence. So that's really good. Look at this guy. <laughs> Get out of here. Um, 
All right, so let's assign him to a system that has a trade company. I don't think we have a trade company yet, but we'll we'll work. Get out of here. All right, the battle at Guyana. Oh, I wanted to change around my battle tactics, but it's a little too late now. So what do they got? They got two pincers and a jaw. Pincer attack 107, defense 78, 107, 78, and then the jaw 11... 101 attack. What do we got going on? We got a Cypher. 62 attack. 183 defense. Not so good. Prowler. 82, 159. Banshee. 178, 117. And then the Shuttle. I think we're outmatched. But let's go to advanced and see if we have any kind of tactical advantage here. Um, long range fighters. They are long-range attackers. So we're going to have to charge straight in. How are we? We are medium-range attackers. Medium, short, medium, long, medium, short. I guess we're just going to have to charge right at them and hope we end up in medium range. No, short range we would have so much of an advantage. So let's just charge in. You know... Energize our hull plating and just go straight at them. Here we go, boys. Whoa, no, what happened? I didn't view the battle. That sucks. It's a little bit anticlimactic, I guess, to watch it after we saw it already, but let's watch it anyway. So here we are defending, patrolling the system and here they come warping in be interesting to see how we I mean their ship had a lot of attack but not a lot of defense so put S foils in attack position I guess or one little turret these are a lot of our um, mercenary ships so here we go let's look at the overhead camera and look at that. Yeah, we're going to start out in medium range and pretty much stay in medium range. This guy is way over here. Two ships way over here out of range, essentially. I don't see them shooting at all. They're barely shooting at long range. They're firing a bunch of missiles at us. We've got some perimeter defense taking care of their missiles for the most part. But we're able to focus all of our attack on their big guy. So that's good because his defense wasn't honestly that strong. But here we are just pummeling him. He's trying to fire missiles at us. It ain't working too good. And there we go. Blasting through his shield. So that's how we were able to win. We were able to catch their big ship unawares. And, uh, catch him all by himself without his escorts. So now they're sort of at our mercy. One ship left. Yep. Yeah. So it's kind of like uh, what the flavor text said. We had our fle fleet was hiding, waiting to pounce on these guys because we knew they were coming. And there we go, decisive victory. Very nice, very nice. It's a victory for well-balanced ships over non-balanced ships. Good job. So there we go. We won the battle. We get pirate shield. We'll have to start adding that to some of our ships. Alright, so we need to build a trade company. Uh, we got some new Epistus on Vanguard, so that's good. Idle Singularities, yes, yes, we know, we know, we know. Alright. Move our fleets around. There's a lot of stuff going on over here at Zaycor that I don't like. St. Chauvier. Lots of pirates. Let's see if we can get out of here. Without getting attacked. That would be nice. Alright, so we've got our fleet heading over there now. So hopefully they can take care of business. Not much else going on, so we'll end that. Oh, gosh. All right. Um, get out of here. That guy freaks me out. Freaks me out to no end. 
All right, let's um, assign him to a system. Where will we put the colonial... No, there's a colonial exchange there. Where will we put the um, trade center? Probably on Viacarus or Guyana. Probably not Guyana. Xenotourism, Pelvis Production. Uh, let's see, we need a place that has trade resources. They've got some, they've got a lot of this lattice stuff. Vanguard has mushrooms. Edisir is right in the middle. Yeah, it might actually be Edisir. All right, Willis. Does that a seer already have a governor? No. All right, get out of here, you weird monster virus man. Yikes. Okay, just. All right. Um, let's see, we're closing in on the end of the episode here. We'll do one more turn and see what happens. Battle at Nair. The Lost Horatio. Let's retreat. Gotta make sure the watch is checked so we don't miss another battle. We retreated. Alright. Get out of here. Now what's this Horatio business? Horatio are considering offering you the honor of an alliance so you might fight alongside such a beautiful specimen. How is your nail care routine? Not... Not great, if I'm honest with you. I could use some tips from the great and wonderful Horatio. More Bagaba population on Trappist 1, so that's good. So we got Colonial Exchange on Viacris has been added. Compression Singularity up next. We're going to try that out. See what we can do with that. The National Museum has been completed on Trappist to give us a little bit more influence up there. Colonizing a new planet on Columba. Drone Networks finally on Gaikon give us a little more production. Same with Guyana and the Interplanetary Transport. They're going to be level 2 colony coming up next, so that'll help us out. Obelisk of Remembrance. Look at that. It's only going to take three turns to build that. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Move our ships around. So it looks like those pirates just either passed through or they didn't get here or something. I kind of want to send a probe out this way, see what's up. Over there, there's a system there. I want to see what that is. And I also want to send a probe over there to see where if there are any pirates at Xanados. I suppose that's it. I guess I'll stay there for now. Oh, the shadow must have come back. Oh, Shargon has a singularity on this system. Or does he? Looks like he does. I don't know. We'll get out of here. Huh. Anyway. Anyway. Got three idle fleets. Um, can we try to pass through here? I thought that's where I thought that's where these guys were going, but somehow they got turned back. Uh, 
Alright, we're gonna have those guys defend that fleet. And then that's it. Alright. So there we go. That was an interesting turn there. There were a series of turns. We're up to turn 84 now. A lot of interesting, weird stuff happened. We got a new hero. Gross, weird man. We got, uh, you know, several new missions and events and quests and stuff. Had a battle. So that was all good. All good stuff. And, uh, yeah, that's going to do it. So we're going to try to get back in the swing of things doing this... Uh, Endless Space 2 thing in conjunction with all the Football Manager stuff I'm doing. Try to do uh, both series somewhat simultaneously and uh, have more content on the channel for people who aren't just pure Football Manager fans. So, until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.